Thank you, Chairman and uh, Professor Fernandez Miranda. It's my great honor to have an opportunity to make my presentation here. Today, I'm talking about surgical anatomy of the arachnoid membranes and cisterns. Especially, I focus on the supratentorial cisterns for anterior circulation aneurysm surgery. There are two types of arachnoid membranes, the outer arachnoid and inner arachnoid membranes. Outer arachnoid membranes is thick and covers the whole brain. Inside the cistern, there are numerous trabecula. The tra trabecula support arteries, veins, and nerves. In some area, numerous trabecula form the inner arachnoid membranes. Here we see right front and temporal lobe. It is easy to hold and split the outer arachnoid membrane. This is easy, quick, and safe technique when we start to open the cervian fissure. This is an illustration of the cisterns and membranes. The outer arachnoid membrane covers the whole brain, and inner arachnoid membranes are in the cistern. Eleven inner arachnoid membranes are in this area. Today, I want to introduce some of them. This lateral view of the left cerebral hemisphere Cerebrian fissure has four major rami. That is a stem, horizontal ramus, ascending ramus, and posterior ramus. Inside the fissure, wide cistern is spreading. The cerebrian cistern can be divided in three compartments, the anterior, posterior medial and posterior lateral compartments. They were also called sphenoidal, insula, and opacular compartments. In this picture, the opaculum was totally re removed from the left cerebral hemisphere, and whole insula is revealed. Insula is the medial wall of the posterior compartment of cerebrian system. Before I start to split the cerebrian fissure, I always find the anterior cerebrian point. The four rami concentrate at one point. This is the anterior cerebrian point. The lower angle of the pass triangularis also shows the anterior cervian point. This point shows the widest space of the cervian fissure, so it is the best point to start split the cervian fissure. The deep side of the anterior cervian point corresponds to the anterior short gyrus and limen insula. So when we approach to the basal cistern, the stem should be open. On the other hand, when you need to approach to the insula area, the posterior rams should be opened. This is an illustration of coronal section of the Serbian system. There are three inner arachnoid membranes, lateral, intermediate, and medial Serbian membrane. Especially intermediate Serbian membrane can be a good landmark when we open the Serbian fissure. 
The posterior lateral compartment has tiny space and dense trabecular. On the other hand, the posterior medial compartment has wide space and sparse trabecular. The intermediate cervian membrane is the boundary of the two comp compartments. Here we see the left cervian fissure, high magnification, frontal lobe and temporal lobe. This is the outer arachnoid membrane and here, this is the posterior lateral compartment. It has tiny space and dense trabecular. Here we see the intermediate cervian membrane and I cut and we can see the posterior medial compartment. Outer arachnoid membrane and posterior lateral compartment, intermediate cervian membrane, posterior medial compartment. In the anterior compartment, the proximal cervian membrane arches across the proximal part of the cervian system from the orbital gyrus to the medial temporal lobe. This membrane is border of the cervian system and carotid system. Here we see the proximal cervian membrane. This is the uh, outer arachnoid membrane. To complete opening the cervian fissure, I cut it so I get access to the carotid system. Next, I'm talking a little bit about pericarosal and lamina terminalis systems. We often use basal interhemispheric approach for ACOM aneurysm surgery. These are uh, axial section of the MR image. And uh, in this approach, the pericarosal, uh, so, uh, these systems have a narrow compartment in the shallow area and wide compartment in the deep area. From the point of view of the anatomy of the cistern, the cervian and pericarosal cisterns are similar. The shallow part of the cistern has tiny space and deep part has wide space. So I usually approach to the deep cisternal space first and then I dissect the arachnoids from both inside to outside and outside to inside to expand the surgical corridor. These are the inferior view of the basal system. The relationship of the basal cisterns and inner arachnoid membranes are complicated. The understanding of the anatomy of the carotid system and related inner arachnoid membrane is important for anterior circulation vascular surgery. Leukist membrane is the most famous membrane. It has two components, the diencephalic membrane and mesencephalic membrane. These two membranes border the interpeduncular system here. The diencephalic membrane extends upwards and attached to the third ventricle floor. The mesencephalic membrane
extent the mesenchymal membrane has membranous part and trabecular part membranous part and trabecular part it extends backward and attached basal artery pca oculomotor nerve and so on This picture shows developed mesencephalic membrane, but this picture shows poor developed mesencephalic membrane. In the endoscopic third ventriculostomy, we can also see the mesencephalic membrane. This is a cadaveric picture. And in this case, here we see poor developed mesencephalic membrane, membranous part and trabecular part. Here we see the relatively developed membrane here. The oculomotor nerve is surrounded by the arachnoid membrane. These structures are reported by Dr. Matsuno in 1988. The mesencephalic membrane extends laterally and attached to the oculomotor nerve attached to the ocular motor nerve. The membrane further extend laterally and attach to the tentorium and the medial temporal lobe here. This is an ICP comb aneurysm case. Here we see the mesencephalic membrane extend laterally and attached to the oculomotor nerve and medial temporal lobe. The mesencephalic membrane is the inferior border of the carotid system. In this case, the temporal lobe should be retract posterior laterally to get the white retrocalcid space. So it is important to dissect the mesencephalic membrane, which attached to the oculomotor nerve and medial temporal lobe. The medial border of the carotid system is the medial carotid membrane, which separates the carotid system and chiasmatic system. After the cut the membrane, we can get access to the interpeduncular system through the carotid system. In the carotid system, there is an intracarotid membrane, which extends downward from the inferolateral surface of the optic tract and attached to the medial temporal lobe. It also attached to the carotid, posterior communicating and anterior choroidal arteries and their perforating branches. Here we see the uh, intracarotid membrane. This membrane and trabecular should be cut to be free the arteries and get clear surgical view. <clears throat> I cut all of this membrane. So 
I introduced some supratentorial cisterns and inner arachnoid membranes. Understanding of the microsurgical anatomy of the arachnoid membranes and cisterns are important and useful for microsurgery. Thank you so much for your kind attention.